What's the basic syntax for writing CSS? Well, I'll tell you. Um, CSS is written in a different way than HTML. We're used to HTML where you've got tags and you've got inside to, and the tags go around, you know, the content on your page. Um, and, and we've got, you know, sometimes you have attribute value pairs like this. How does it all work in CSS? Well, I'll tell you. Um, some of the stuff is going to look familiar, but the format is completely different. I'm going to delete this dummy text up here, and I'm going to start by talking about um, whereas in you know in HTML we we have tags, but in in CSS we have what's called selectors, and all the reason it's called a selector is because what it is is it's selecting whatever the element is or the the thing that you want to style that you want to add style to that you want to affect in some way and fortunately we're going to start by looking at what's called html selectors and these are the selectors that you're already familiar with these are the selectors that already exist in here as tags so what i what i mean by that is let's start with the basic one this one right here the body tag okay we can just write body like that and that's a CSS selector and to, to say what to, to define what it is that we're going to do we're going to use these curly brackets right here and the curly brackets are, are on the right side of the P key on your keyboard and so you just want to hit shift and, and put them and, and click those buttons and those are your curly brackets right there and everything that goes inside these curly brackets that's going to be you know whatever it however you want to affect everything that's inside the body tag on this page and on any page that's that's you know connected to this particular style sheet and so um so let me show you a little bit of what i mean um let's say for example i wanted to change the background color okay the background color of the entire page i could type out uh, background color Okay, and this is a very specific, there's a specific syntax to this, and we're going to be covering this in the next few screencasts, but I just want to kind of give you a sneak peek as to how it works. And then what you do is you use a colon, okay? You use a colon instead of an equal sign. You're used to using equal signs here. Instead, we use a colon. I'm going to put a space, and then I'm going to write the name of the color that I wanted to change it to. Let's say I wanted to change it to red, okay? And so, now, the, the vocabulary to talk about this is actually the same vocabulary that we use to talk about the stuff here. This is an attribute, okay, it's a CSS attribute, and this is a value. This is the value of the attribute. Oh, one thing I forgot to do here is at the end of every attribute value pair, you need to put a semicolon. And this is probably, it probably seems really random right now, but trust me, as we get going and as I show you lots and lots of examples, you're going to see the pattern and it's going to make sense to you. But here we go. I've got the selector, an HTML selector here. I have an attribute here, background color. So that's saying what it is about the everything in the body tag that I want to change. And I've got the value here, which is what I want to change it to. So I'm going to hit save and we're going to go to Google Chrome here, and we're going to hit reload, and we're going to see what happens. Wow! See what I did there? I applied the color red as the background color to everything that's inside the body tag. Okay, and that makes sense, because really, whenever you apply anything to the body in CSS, that means the whole page, for all intents and purposes. So, that's how that works. Let's take a quick look here. Let's go back to the CSS style sheet, and let's actually, I'm going to delete this for now, and I'm just going to to type, um, um, I'm actually just going to type stuff goes here. This doesn't actually work right now, okay? And I want to show you a couple more HTML selectors. Um, another one that we could do is we could do H1. You've seen H1 before, okay? We have an H1 right here, and whatever I do to H1 will only affect H1. So I could do something like background color again. Whoops, color red. And I could do that. And now if I apply this, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to delete this completely. I don't want to mess things up. Um, this is blank, so it's okay to leave that right there. It's, it's not going to do anything at all. Um, so if I just do a background color red to my H1, what do you think is going to happen? Let's try to predict this, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to start by just taking this off completely. There we go. We'll hit save and let's reload this. Okay, so we're back to normal. Now let's put just background color red on H1. What's going to show up? Well, the H1 here is going to get a background color of red, or at least that's what should happen. So let's save this and let's see if that happens. That's exactly what happens. See? 
So the, the H1, the header here, got a background color of red. So now we're starting to think, oh, okay, so now we can apply this. And you can have more than one attribute value pair. Okay, but what happens when you start getting more than one attribute value pair, and I'm just, for the sake of the example, just going to start doing this for you. You can probably see how, oh, when I'm going to turn soft wrap or text on, you can still probably see how this starts to get really messy looking and hard to read. Yeah, we don't like that. So here's a trick, and this is, you're going to see this, I'm going to use this format of, of organizing my CSS uh, code uh, from this point forward to just keep things really, really simple. This is how you do it. Just like HTML, spacing doesn't matter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put each attribute value pair on its own line. And I'm going to do it this way, even with the curly bracket down at the bottom like that. And you might think that looks kind of funny, but trust me, you know, once you start applying all these different styles, and by the way, I would never actually have the same attribute value pair repeated over and over again. This is just as an illustration. Um, I'm going to do it this way so that I can see at a glance, okay, what is it? What HTML selector or what selector am I affecting? It's H1. And then everything below here that's between these two brackets is happening to the H1. And I can save that. And then I can go next line and then I can choose more selectors. Um, so does that make sense? Okay, so when you see you can have something just all flat on one line, but I don't do it that way. I like to have it one per line. Um, even when I start off with just one, one attribute value pair, I always use, like even if it's just this, I start with that format and then I just add more as I go because that's how you build CSS style sheets. You usually start with just one and then you go back and you tweak and you start adding more lines and more lines and more lines and then that just makes life a lot simpler. Um, so yeah, um, so the syntax, select your name right there, open your curly brace, brace right there and then go to the next line, tab over, write the name of the attribute and see Text Wrangler is so smart it knows. It just knows that you're writing CSS and it says, oh, hey, that's a valid attribute name. I'm going to change the color. And then you just put your value in there and then you close the semicolon. And then on the next line, you tab over and you close your curly break, brass bracket. <laughs> so let's do one more. Let's actually look at the P HTML selector. And as you can probably um, imagine in fact this this time I'm going to do rather than background color I'm just going to go color and actually maybe I'll do green okay and so in this case um, I'm saying I'm giving the attribute the attribute of color is going to change the text color to green um, and what is it going to affect it's going to affect all the paragraph tags in my HTML so anything that is within paragraph tags is going to be turned to the color green. So let's see if that actually works. I'm going to go there, I'm going to hit reload, and sure enough, I don't know if you can tell, but that's actually green, okay? It didn't change the color of the links because there's a different, we actually need to use a different um, um, HTML selector for that, um, and it didn't change the color of the H1, and that makes sense, right? Because coming soon is not within P tags, it's within H1 tags, okay? So that's just the basic syntax. One more thing I want to show you, one more little little kind of trick, is I want to show you, remember how we actually had commenting, and we don't have an example of it right here, but let me remind you what it looks like. I'm going to just type up at the top here. I'm going to say, this is an example of a comment. There we go, okay? And this isn't going to show up in the browser. That's just comments to yourself. You can do the same thing in style sheets, except the format is different, okay? What you need to do is you need to go, there's two ways of doing it. Well, actually, it's not. It's all the same way. It's just sometimes it looks different. You can do a slash like this, and then asterisk, and then you can say, this is a comment, and then you do asterisk, and then slash again. And you see how this is gray, it's kind of, it's hard to tell on the screen, but that's actually a dark gray, and the rest of this is normal. If I don't close it, everything turns dark gray, which means everything's being commented out. We don't want that. So, whoops, oh my goodness. There we go. Okay, and this is the order you have to do it. Slash, asterisk, whatever it is you want it to be the comment, and then asterisk, then slash. It doesn't actually have to be on its own line. You can actually 
put things at the end of lines like that. And this is really handy when you're trying to make notes to yourself. You've done some sort of CSS work and you just want to put a little note to yourself to remind yourself of what something does. Like this turns the background of the headers to red. And that's just a nice little tool to help you keep track of things. Okay, um, and you can have multiple line comments as well. Let's say I, I wanted to do something like this. I could go like that, as many lines as you want. You could even have, I've seen, you know, credits written like this, where everything within here will just be, will just be commented out. But in the meantime, let's just do this. We'll just say, this is a comment, just as a little reminder to ourselves. Okay, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to say stuff goes here and then I'm going to go ahead and replace all of these because we are eventually going to change all that and so on and so forth. So I'm going to save this. This is an accurately formatted CSS style sheet. It's going to do exactly nothing because you're applying exactly no attributes <laughs> to or you're not you're not applying any changes to any of the selectors um, and if I reload this you'll see we're back to normal um, but now at least we've got a basis for starting to build our style sheet and that's it for now okay so um, I hope that you like this thank you for watching and I'll see you next time